Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Clay Ramage. Back again with another Goodwill Bins haul today. And uh, I just realized a couple things I didn't look up. I was gonna do that before I filmed this video, but I'm kind of running tight on time today. So I'm trying to rush through this. But um, anyway, uh, when today's Thursday, which I usually don't go to the bins on Thursday, but being it's winter time, there's no garage sales, that kind of stuff. I'm probably will start going to the bins twice a week now. Um, my usual Mondays and then Thursdays possibly depend upon what's all going on. But today I decided to go found some uh, a few household household items, a few vintage items, and um, not too much though, not not like I usually do. But I'm excited about the ones I did find, and I found a good number of books as well. So we'll go through those at the end. But. Um, this was one of the items I was going to look up and I failed to do that, but it is a sculpture. There's a face here. I don't know if you can see it. Here's the nose, the mouth, and the eyes. And it is marked on the back, Strauch, S-T-R-A-U-C-H-94. So it's like a piece of granite. Yeah. Um, so I was excited about that. I think... Um, I pick up artwork and sculptures when I see them, especially at the bins, although this is a little heavier. So I probably paid $4 for this because I was, because I didn't buy much. So my rate was $2 and 19 cents a pound. And I would say this is probably about two pounds. So, um, but still, I think stuff like this does well when it's good artwork. And I got some cheap bottle brush trees for my Christmas village, which I pick up. This was kind of Cool. Oh, just realized his head's loose, but it's the Holy Family, Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus. It's a candle, and um, it's a vintage piece, so I picked it up, but I didn't know his head was loose, and then something I suppose I may have done, although I tried to be careful. Probably happened in the bins. Um, and then this piece was really, really cool. And again, many times I'm amazed at what survives the bins. And it's this Fenton silver crest bowl, but it's also been uh, gilded in gold around the edge. And then it's hand painted in the bowl, the basin of the bowl. Uh, it still has a partial label on the bottom. It's not artist signed. Um, Many times the Fenton artists would sign their pieces, but in this particular case they didn't, or if they did, you know, it's come off. But still, I thought it was a very nice bowl, 49 cents. Couldn't beat it. And then also, I found this box, which has some cups in it, and I usually don't buy drinking glasses, but these are the Coca-Cola 100 Centennial Celebration Series. 49 cents each for these. I got four of them in the original box. Again, they're not high dollar items, but there was a set of three that sold for $11. So I figured the set of four, I could ask somewhere between 15 and 20 because it's still packed in the original box, basically never used. Um, so those will get listed on eBay. Found some Tupperware, this whole stack of Tupperware containers. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. And they have the lids. And then, of course, each one acts as a lid for the one below it. So that's kind of a cool little thing. And as you guys know, I'm starting to get into Tupperware a little more. I did find two, I'll just say unusual things. That I, and again, I was going to look these up to see. But they're two vintage clothing patterns kind of like the needle work items but in this case they're directions on making beautiful clothing dated 1985 and as you guys know the 80s are big right now so i thought you know what there could be somebody who wants to make some 1980s outfits out of these um yeah one's dated 1984 and one's dated 1985 i don't know if you can see that I'm trying to get the glare off of it um so yeah, so little quilted heart patterns. Those are kind of fun. Now this is the item I was really excited about. It's the six cup Pyrex percolator. 
Um, it's extremely dirty. It was probably sitting in somebody's basement for a good number of years or in the garage. But it's in excellent condition. There's one little, that's actually a factory flea bite. Same with those. It's got the original glass percolator, smart Pyrex. So with a good clean, this is good. These items go for $35, $40 um, in great condition, which this one is. So excited about that one. And she only charged me 49 cents because it was glassware. Yes. I'm excited about how they do that sometimes. Oh yeah, I found a little vintage Big Ben clock. Still works. I wound it up, heard it ticking. I didn't try the alarm, but this is the a true vintage model, not the newer ones that they try to pass off as vintage. So again, vintage as in probably 70s to 80s, not super old. Oh, I did find some jewelry that I put in this little kitty tin. So what did I find for jewelry? I found this cross necklace. It got tangled up with some other things. And I didn't, again, I, when I find jewelry, I just pick it up and throw it in the lot and then go from there. I thought this ring was really kind of cool. Kind of an artist designed ring. It's not marked. It's like steel and copper and brass. But I think it's an artist designed piece. Kind of cool. I don't see a signature on it. And then, oh, there's this bracelet. It's a cute, cool, cute little bracelet. And then there's some random earrings, none of them matching. So, so yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, a lot of that will just go in my jewelry jars that I sell. Picked up a couple extra pins for here at the shop. Can always use good pins. All right. And then books, we pay 49 cents an inch um, now, and records are included in that along with CDs and DVDs. So I picked up this particular record. It's The Roar of Love, the second chapter of Acts. First, I was like, what is that about? Because the cover is of a lion. Looks like the story of Narnia, right? Well, I love the back. Look at that graphic. It's dated 1979. This is a some musicians' rendition. They developed or wrote all of these songs to go along with the Chronicles of Narnia. That was their inspiration. And so then they recorded them onto a record. Now this says copyright 1978, but the artwork says 1979 copyright. So we know that it was published in 79. I just thought that was quite unusual. So I haven't looked it up. But that'd be fun to listen to. So I'll have to get my record player going over here and give that a listen to and see if there's anything exciting. Okay, now for the books. I found, yep, I got all three of them. I was looking for, there's a set, I believe, of quite a few of these. But I only found three because this one says volumes 13 and 14. These are the Masterpiece Library of Short Stories. So it's the world's thousand best short stories. I found a book of, I found three of them. So there's 13 and 14, five and six, and nine and 10. So these are not high dollar. Some of these can be, but in this particular case, they're like $5 books uh, individually. If you can find the whole set, they go for a little more, but, um, but yeah. So I'm excited just to find some of them. This one was exciting. The Runaway Robot in paperback, scholastic book. Oh, I, didn't, I thought it was looking better, but I, the cover looks so nice. I didn't bother to look inside, and you can tell it's got some water damage. I wouldn't have picked it up had I known that. But anyway, great graphic. Now, this is one, being the book itself is severely water damaged, um, I could take the cover and actually frame just the cover. And that would make a great little picture. So that's an option for that, being it's a little damaged. 
And I picked up two little golden books. Now these are new ones, but they're of Star Wars. Star Wars are always collectible. Um, and they're in great shape. So Star Wars, I put these down at the Pink Elephant for, these will probably, I'll put $2.99 on these since they're Star Wars. And uh, we do well with that. Found the complete works of O. Henry with the dust jacket still on it, which is great. Dust jacket does have some wear to it, but the book itself is in excellent condition. Now this is volume two. It's a the volume two. Ah, I have a two volume set, so that's cool. This there's a series. There's a whole bunch of library books as from a high school, elementary school actually, or must have been the whole district because I remember both. But this one is the Yearling. Uh, now this one appears to have been rebound at some point, maybe. Or it's a library copy, which is more than likely what it is. Um, and here's the library information on it. And again, sometimes that's, um, you know, gives you a provenance that it is original. This is the 1938 version. I believe it is a first edition. No part of that yet. Yep. So, and for a library book, it's actually in excellent condition. The pages and everything, there's obviously writing in the front cover and the, the other things that libraries do with their books. Oh. This is a, then came November. This is a novel. Love the graphics on it. Again, this is not a high dollar one, but I thought it was interesting. Somebody basically took like, some really thin shrink wrap and wrapped it up to protect it, which was great because it's now still in excellent condition. Oops, bumble fingers. Sorry, went off camera for a moment. <laughs> um, Fire Hunter by Jim Hogart. Um, I just love some of these old graphic novels. Oh, here's another one. See, it was a Minneapolis Public Schools library. So, so yeah, somebody was purging a bunch of books. Is this another one? Nope, this was a different one. Swear by Apollo by um, Shirley Barker. I didn't, I don't even know. 1958. Don't know why I grabbed that one. But anyway, I did. <laughs> I get excited about books. Oh, yes. Essay on Morals by Wiley. This actually is... Um, one of the more valuable books that I picked up, 1947. Um, love the, the font style from these. It also is in fairly good condition. Bindings tight. Um, so it has a little crink, crinkle to it when you open the book. Um, somebody did write in the in pencil on the inside front cover. It must have been sold from a used bookseller at some point. But yeah, this could be a twenty to forty dollar book, depending upon condition and things like that. So that was my big find as far as book goes. Children's book, Eloise with the old blue truck. Love that title. Um, nineteen seventy one by Whitman Publishing, Racine, Wisconsin. And then we also picked up Lassie. Love Lassie. It's the authorized edition as opposed to the unauthorized edition. All right, this book I picked up for my personal reference. This is Frederick Remington's own West. And this was written and illustrated by Frederick Remington. So it's basically him talking about different pieces of art that he did. Um, and going through all of that. So for me, this becomes a reference book because its personal value is, again, five bucks maybe I was hoping it would be a, worth a little more but it's not picked up this one players choice NFL football um, talks about the major players and this again is was from 1969 so it's got a five to ten dollar value so that'll go down to the pink elephant oh yeah another one I was going to look up. 
Hawaii Five O book. I didn't know they had Hawaii Five O books. When did they start doing that? Never saw it. Never heard of it. 1971. I remember that show. I loved that show as a kid. So, yeah, Octopus Keeper. So this is more of a the um, and again it's another authorized edition. This is more of the uh, juvenile series books. This one I <laughs> I love this one. Oh, I crack myself up sometimes. Um. Oh, this one's published in England. Nineteen. No, printed in the USA. Copyright nineteen seventy seven. Oh, William Collins, England. Okay. So, it's the Kitchen Wizard's Cookbook. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna crack up at this one. You can make food arrows. Here's your magic ingredients, and there's the magic formula, how to put it all together, and then the whiz trick. I just thought that is awesome. Oh, here you got the crunchy bunchy with all of your secret ingredients. Magic formula. Oh, I thought this was awesome. I'm gonna have to read this one before I try to sell that. Um, this one I picked up just because again the dust jacket is beautiful, of course. Goodwill had their sticker on there, which kind of got peeled off and peeled part of the cover off, but rest of it's in really nice shape. It's a novel from the 1950s. And last but not least, the big book, Birds of America. Oh crud, I did that. I have to unfold all these pages because it was not like that when I grabbed it. So somewhere along the line, I crushed the pages. But this particular book gives you, talks about all the birds of America. Isn't that awesome? Colored illustrations as well as black and white. I love these bird references. It's one of the things I do miss from our house. We used to have a bird feeders outside of our kitchen window. And I could sit and look at all the birds. Now, of course, in our condo, we can still see them through the trees because of all of our trees in our area, but we can't attract them like we used to with the bird feeder. But anyway, that's what we got today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time. Bye.